I'm Rachel with Hell Rocks, and we are here with Vela and Mitya from Moon Sorrow. We're going to have our signature downing a pint interview without the pints today. But that's okay, I think we'll live. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah, we, we have just changed our habits. We don't drink anymore. That's wow. the proof. That's terrifying. I, I can't handle that. I need to leave now. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so we've been hearing that the new albums had some delays and for us we kind of drew the conclusion that you guys just aren't really willing to compromise on what you're putting out so we have to ask what is Moon Sorrow all about for you like what's this next album gonna be all about you actually answered the question while asking it. I did. <laughs> they're unwilling to make compromises how do you think that's gonna come across well at the moment it's coming coming out great we had a lot of delays and also we had a lot of, had to ditch a lot of ideas and and songs and everything like the a lot of material what was just erased that we already had written and it took took a long time to, uh, to just to find the direction and and we still are working on it i mean it's something that is going to be tweaked until the very end of mm -hmm. of the process but it's coming good now so you feel like you're making those big steps that are necessary we have some good stuff coming awesome can't tell us any little sneak peeks? No. <laughs> okay, fair enough. But it's it's not gonna be those half an hour songs. Oh, that'll be a change. Uh, Henry mentioned a while back that uh, Moon Sorrow was never meant to be kind of like this household name, household brand. Um, how has the success that you've had kind of contradicted that? I don't think it contradicted it in any way. It's, uh, any success we got just happened. Mm -hmm. We didn't really aim for anything. Anything yeah. else than creating the best music possible. Yeah, it, it's it's the thing that I actually really like about our so-called success or anything, because we it's kind of kind of honest. That we never marketed the band to be able to go I don't know to Japan or America it just, everything all the demand came from like outside um, instead of us pushing us all the time of course when we switched to a <laughs> bigger record label and booking agency and managers and stuff then people are working for you and trying to make the band more visible but the groundwork was done just by the demand from from the, from the people who liked our music and was it kind of a big surprise though from when you initially started out? Kind of, yeah. 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 So, uh, to start with, our lyrics are in Finnish. Yeah. When we got the first offers from abroad, it was quite amazing. I, we were just thinking, like, uh, someone actually listens to this outside of Finland. Yeah. And <laughs> Do people they want like, us sing to along there at the shows? They try. Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of awesome. <laughs> yeah, in some countries, they really can sing along. Like in Hungary, for example, people. At least at some point, they really knew the lyrics, but there are a lot of mumbo jumbo happening in the crowd. <laughs> it's not really accurate, but yeah, like but, in the states. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> they're keen to sing along. And the effort's got to be like, <laughs> it's got to feel really awesome. I appreciate it. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Um, especially with your last album, Vadre Nakuli Mekulade and Masa, that was a huge success, and it brought a lot more international attention. How was the development of that different than the new upcoming albums? Well, it was quicker. We had <laughs> <laughs> the development of Mariana was actually it was quicker. Still four four years since the last yeah length album. Well, we had Tuli Mursku in between. Yeah. But when we had the the idea, the concept in mind, it, it just started taking off very fast, and mm -hmm. we came up with the. With pretty much everything, like the <coughs> musical concept and everything, pretty fast. So it didn't take that long to compose compared to this time when we really are searching for the right way to go and right things to emphasize in music. Where do you think the bulk of the time goes during the process? Is it the recording, the lyric writing, the composition? Uh, getting the ideas together. Yeah. Kind yeah. of putting the everything so in. So called. Divine inspiration takes the most of the time. 
when we actually have started working, we have like when we have a good basis for a song, mm -hmm. it usually happens pretty fast. It's just about getting, getting the started. initial. Yeah. Where do you find that you can kind of get that inspiration from? Forest. Forest <laughs> is a good answer. <laughs> yeah. I don't know really. It's where well, we always live yeah. in Vanta. It's quite a lot of forest. They just, they just happen. Yeah. yeah. And something that creative people usually have is that they don't have to actually go, for example, to forest or anything. You, if you if you're, have a lot of imagination and you get the inspiration from there, you don't, you don't need to be a, to sing about forest. You don't actually have to go there all the time no. to get the inspiration. It's more of a metaphor mm -hmm. than actual being that you have to work with. State of mind, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And most of the inspiration is still just hard work. Mm. It's quite irritating when like big artists talk about uh, inspiration in a way that it's just something that happens to you and you just have to wait for it. Yeah. Actually it might, <laughs> might, might never happen if you just keep waiting, you just you have to push yourself to work. So your philosophy is more yeah. reach out and take it than mm. wait for it to come to you. It's a good philosophy. Yeah. Well, I'm not very creative in Munzer. I haven't written a lot of stuff. And the stuff that I write, for example, is it's not very Munzer thing. But so I, I cannot talk so much about that. But I also notice that the more you create, the more you will get inspired, mm -hmm. and you, mm -hmm. you start creating more. So the really, process flows it a bit easier. Itself. Yeah. Um, the sound has definitely developed a lot. We've gone from melodic black metal to focused black metal and it's been developing and changing all the time. Um, how has that kind of changed or continuing with this next album? We, Without well, giving too much away. No, we still keep doing what feel, feels right at the moment. And that's probably why we have always kind of changed our style. Mm -hmm. Just because we always did what we felt like doing at, the, at that very moment. I mean, a phrase that gets tossed around a lot is pagan metal. Um, what is what does that mean to you guys? Well, pagan, the word pagan that's that's the answer. It's a core of 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 the band mm -hmm. um, beliefs. So uh, none of us are very religious, even like in a way of being pagan. But but there's something like like the core of paganism is nature, for example, and that's also in our music. You don't even have to read the lyrics or something. You you will hear that that the nature is the source of it in a way. At least I feel like that. Mm. It's more about the way the music speaks and comes across and conveys that rather than having it be about any sort of school of thought. Uh, yeah, and about how nature speaks to us and we channel to music. Yeah. It's a good way to look at it. You have a lot of bands that are really obsessed with, well, one specific aspect of it, and that could get kind of frustrating. Yeah, and what comes to music, we never want to find the perfect recipe of making music or music. We always want to challenge ourselves, and we kind of almost hate the previous albums. We always want to really? just clean the table, you know, in a good way. I mean, we want to clean the table and do something completely different. Like for example, after. After Kiven Kanta, we didn't want anything to do with that kind of music, oh, and no. that's how that's how Very Saket came along yeah. because we turned our back com completely. That's I mean, progression. Yeah, you have to change and grow as a band, of course. Yeah, we we could always do the previous album twice because but we already did it. We know we don't know how to do it again. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it wouldn't be fair to to us or the fans. Do you have anything that you're working on now that kind of encompasses that, that you're really excited and it's a bigger change? Hmm. I don't know. The, yeah, the material is still quite uh, kind of spread across in my head. Mm -hmm. Really can't grasp it just yet, like what would be the focal point. When you no. think about like getting up there on stage and, and playing like one of the new songs, like what about it kind of makes it so exciting for you? I think it's just the joy of playing the new songs or songs that we haven't played before. It, it's sense of novelty. Yeah, it, it feels, I mean, we, we played the other songs we played so many times for so many years 
it, it's really refreshing to have something new to play in. and that's yeah, and it's it it starts from the rehearsals actually it's a because uh for example i'm i can be quite a lazy person but when i get a new song and i know that i have to practice it because we're gonna play this live <laughs> lights the fire yeah yeah like beat uh whichever band i played with it's always when i get some new material to rehearse gives me a kick yeah like makes makes me feel useful again do you, have, <laughs> do you have anything like that? Kind of lights the fire? Well, I'm even, even lazier than Villa. I, I practiced the songs <laughs> the previous night. <laughs> so, day before is my method. But yeah, it's the same. I mean, I, I really enjoy playing live. It's the, I would say the most inspiring thing in my life is to play, play shows. Why is that? I, well, First of all, it, it, for example, touring is it, it's, it's a lot of fun. You get to travel with your friends, and you get to play your music for people. And when you enjoy playing shows and you enjoy traveling and so on, it's, it's something that nothing can really replace in your life. And it's something that I thought just a couple of days ago, if, if I don't play in a band anymore, what am I going to do in a way? Like, yeah. Because you're, you get used to having getting sort, sort of kicks out of playing shows and the adrenaline all the funny times that people are having on tour and you can't can't really do that on at home no <laughs> breaking stuff you don't have people <laughs> shouting yeah. your name yeah. <laughs> normal job <laughs> yeah <laughs> probably wouldn't have that job for long no maybe not no. i don't think so i mean i guess the fans probably give back a lot too um, are there any specific countries that you just keep going back to to capture that mm. A lot of talk about Brazil. Well, we haven't been to Brazil actually. Is that a goal? Would you like yeah. to go there? We would definitely yeah. like to go there. Anywhere, basically. Anywhere. What are What are some other kind of untapped markets? You've been Asia. to Asia. Yeah, we've been to China and Japan, but places like Thailand and Indonesia would be interesting. In well, anywhere. I don't really care where. Yeah. Basically, yeah. anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> anywhere you roam. Sure. Well, the Finnish metal scene went through several years of this kind of fanaticism on the international scene, stemming mostly from the folk metal. How has that kind of impacted you guys personally? Do you think you owe any success to that? Or? It felt weird. Why? Weird knowing that you actually played a part in that. Mm. Our band actually played a part in that. I mean, if it, you think it feels about weird. It, yeah, it's going to be in the textbooks one day in these music history books. How does that feel? Well, at least there's a mark somewhere. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Like some time, uh, like way way back, people used to think that there is no point in life if you're not mentioned after you're dead. Yeah, so we have already been. I'm, I'm kind of happy if I'm mentioned after I'm dead. I'm yeah. actually. I don't In really a nice know because way. <laughs> I, don't, I don't actually know because I don't think I can be happy or not happy when I'm dead. But you, you know what I mean. Know. I I got you. I'm happy now knowing that I might be mentioned after I'm dead. You already are in museum <laughs> museum in Hungary. Seriously. Yeah, and there was. What did you do? In some I don't know if it was ethnographic <laughs> museum of Budapest, but there was a the poster of Pagan Fest, and it was about Finnish people and how. How people see Finland, and one of the <laughs> things in the exhibition how was people that. see Finland. <laughs> yeah. Hello. Hello. <laughs> and Korpiklani and Moons are in, in the poster. <clears throat> well, I mean, years ago when I first moved here, people thought that Finland was in Sweden, to be very honest. I don't know what that says about Americans. But now people are like, oh yeah. They think Sweden is in Finland. Okay. <laughs> I wish. No, no. <coughs> Nowadays, people actually know some of the big bands. They're like, oh yeah, that's where Korpiklani mm -hmm. is from. That's where Moon Sorrow is from. Yeah. Kind of makes me a little prouder. They're educating themselves. <laughs> yeah. Um, one other thing I've been hearing a lot about was the release you guys did with uh, Blood Music, the vinyl box set. Um, how did that come about? That was a really strong response. Yeah, it was a long process. Um, yeah, like two years or something? Yeah. Really I met the it. owner of the company, and he he was just starting the label when I when I met him, and 
suddenly the whole label took off mm. very fast and they started releasing big records like this uh, Strapping Young Lad box and I think that was the biggest so far and it got a lot of attention and he started talking to me like hey, could we do Moose Arrow box set and, and it was it was a great idea and I never thought it's gonna happen actually because it's such a big <coughs> project to put it all together is hundreds and hundreds of hours I don't know maybe thousands from this guy did you I mean what's the process like for that like converting audio to vinyl the process is, yeah well the audio is one thing the other thing is all the cover art all the details everything and Intense DVD process. and like there are millions of factors yeah, everything has to be made new I mean, one of my friends t told me that, like, she had a friend who had a jar on her desk at work and people were, like, donating money to that because she wanted it so bad. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear any other no. stories like that? Like, mm. How does it feel no. to hear that? It's humbling. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess it would be. That's that's huge to hear but somebody I, say I can, that. I can understand why, why some people really wanted it so badly. Because... It is one of a kind thing. It's, mm. it's special. Yeah. What made you guys decide and to it, do And that? it's like this big. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, I've seen it. It's, it's I need to get rid of some furniture <laughs> yeah. before I get it home. What did you get rid of? Uh, I haven't decided yet. <laughs> I have to think about I'm, it. I'm probably going to get it like next week or... Yeah. So I have to be quick in my decisions. Did you get rid of any furniture? Um, yeah, but I emptied one of my terrariums, so I could maybe put it there. <laughs> okay, see, that works. Yeah. I don't need a crib, I'll just keep my moon sorrow <laughs> yeah. there, the baby can sleep on top of it. <laughs> yeah, also okay. very good. Yeah, but there's one problem, you can't put anything on top of my, on top of mine. Ooh, sorry. So it, it really can't serve as a chair or a table, even if it's a <laughs> quite fitting size for that. It has to be just yeah. sculpture in the home. You can replace a TV with it. Okay. Just stare at it. I'll, I'll do that. <laughs> I don't even have a TV to begin with, so... Yeah. Well, you, you're gonna get the vinyl. But, I, yeah, I can start staring at my vinyl box. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Trippy. <laughs> uh, so we've heard that you guys are gonna play your longest set ever tonight, so that's gonna be like six songs, right? Six hours. Six, six hours? hours? No, no. <laughs> Um, are there any songs you had to kind of practice extra to remember? I mean, your songs are so long, it Every, seems like quite a challenge. You know, everything came together quite really easily. Mm -hmm. I was really surprised when we got, got together mm -hmm. at the rehearsal place and just started playing these songs we had, hadn't been playing for years. Everything just like... Fell into place? Yeah, there, there was a flow. But How it's a bad you... song. It's a bad song, uh -oh. yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because if everything is so easy in the rehearsals, you will forget something in during the show. It's, it's the same as having sound check with a perfect sound. You know that when you go on stage again to play the show, it's gonna be horrible. I mean, it's I, I had one sound check where it went so bad, the guy couldn't capture my violin or anything like that, and then the show yeah. went perfectly. But I don't Usually know. It happens that way. Mm. Well, I, you, I you might in. trip on the way to the venue. It's probably fine. Sorry? <laughs> you might trip or something on the way to the venue, and then it's yeah. fine. <laughs> yeah. I'm there. <laughs> it's a lot of stairs. Yeah. Uh, well, a fun question we always like to ask. What was the first band shirt you remember buying? For me, it was David Lee Roth, and for Nikki, it was definitely Pantera. Hmm. First. Could have been amorphous. Amorphous. Could have been. How old were you? Uh, when was Tales released? Ninety-three or ninety-four? Thirteen or fourteen? <laughs> I was like four. <laughs> what about you? Well, I don't know if it counts. I wanted to have a Beatles shirt when I was four, so that's my first band shirt. That counts. Yeah. That's a good one. So, is there anything you'd like to share with our listeners before? Should we? Alcohol? <laughs> we no, no, we don't share alcohol. No, we don't share alcohol. <laughs> Why can't we share alcohol? I mean, I can't, but I mean, okay. you guys It's can. too expensive in Finland. Yeah. Okay. In Germany, we can share. <clears throat> yeah. And bourbon or scotch? Scotch, scotch. definitely. 
<laughs> She's winning. I mean, bourbon all with cokes, but... You don't eat coke with bourbon. That's the only way I eat bourbon. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, thank you for listening, and check back in with us for more awesome interviews. Thanks. <laughs>